If it wouldn't be for the Italians, you wouldn't see Bocci playing here. Yeah, especially here, he's punctual here every day. <laughs> yeah. He looks around, who's coming, who's not coming. And then he grabs the Bocci, looks alone, sits there. Come on, oh, there's another guy coming. Oh, there's another car, okay, we're six. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> this has been going on for many years, this park here, like for the Italians. There's most of the time, you know, you have to wait an hour or two hours before you have a chance to play. And uh, sometimes we short up players. And that's how it is, but people come here and, and just even watching, walking back and forth and have fun just watching us play. This is the car, they just to make it look through. This is the part of it. Friendly guard. When I come here, I don't live too far from here. You know, only five a block. And then you have all Italian people, you know, all of friends, you know. They have a, three, four guys that come at the same time. I said, oh. you know, how we play bocce, eh? Because he, the guys who know me, I play back home too, you know, to Italy. So they come with to me, got a lot, of, too many guys to play bocce. And then I come right other way because, you know, this is my sport, I like it. After the one week I'm here, I find, 44 years. I play red ball and all, red. I know was subdivided and houses were built in sort of 1910 to 1920. And, uh, you know, I don't know much about the park at that point. We had some early photos that we took of it where it was laid out in a much more sort of classic formal style. Uh, and there were bocce courts situated over where the bathroom was and with the, with the big uh, clubhouse at that point. You know, between then and today, certainly I don't know that much about it apart from my experiences living opposite to it. 
which have been for a number of years now. No, no worry, no worry. Don't get excited for me either. Oh. The people who uh, ended up uh, at that park uh, are a part of the history of the community because they started right after the war, probably before 1950. For so many years now, old people come coming here. A lot of people will die, you know, because they're old. But uh, some people will come here for 50 years ago. You know, I would just walk here, nothing like us. Some of the guys, like, uh, some of the guys, they came all the way from south, like you were. Some of where Burnaby, you know. You see a group over here and a group over there, and, and they're so demanding. They want their partner to put that ball right where they ask. <laughs> so, you got to be good to play with these guys. Well, the bocce players have been playing bocce ball in this park for a really long time. Initially, when we lived here, there was no bocce carts, either here or down further. And the, the Italian men used to play just all over the grass, just roaming all over. And they would yell at kids and dogs to stay out of the way. It's like it's this it was their territory and they owned it. The Parks Board gave them money and the supplies to build the bocce ball courts themselves and the players were responsible for maintaining them. And it took them about two years before they would deign to use the courts. And this guys, three guys, to build the ingress. D'Angelo. Another one pass away. No, two pass away. We tease each other like, like kids sometimes, right? <laughs> For us and now, you know, to play bocce look like when you have uh, good for us. For us, this uh, Call bocce, but for us, to play all the time, yeah. and that's all you have, you know, the sport, look like good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you play every day. Yes. <laughs> okay, the bocce going good. See? I am a professional. You can you can talk anybody here. Any trophy you see run, my name on. I win the two, not all the time, but you know, most of, most of the time I win. This is me. This is he was at the tournament. Single one, I think 17, 18 years ago. I go play the Thunder Bay for 10 years, and then when I win, he gave me this for a present. I, I played the Bocce when I was two years old, and then I like it, you know, still to play, I think, all of the, my life. Then I have a trophy. I don't know what I'm going to do for this trophy. All the way. 
at 10 o'clock. I make it three, four hours in the morning, you know, and then on the 12 o'clock, I go to the park to play. <laughs> this isn't the life. But there's another good one. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, come down. Come well, down, I start, baby. I start come playing down. boxing when I was a teenager come back down. home because that's one of the world's most economic sports that you could play. Looking very good. Oh, look at that. The Italian Culture wow. Center has perhaps the finest bocce courts in Western Canada for certain tens of thousands of dollars in producing excellent courts. Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a bad one for us. Between that's myself a good one for you. and Nelsa, there's 50 trophies in here. Half of them I already given them away to my relatives when they came here. They, they like it, so I give some of them. But I'm going to pick one here and there, uh, the one that really, really meant something to me. This one was a, a, a tournament of 64 teams that we played on Renfrew and Hastings at the Hastings community, which they used to have four bocce courts in there. And we start early in the morning and we finished at dawn. I decided to, to come to Canada. I did have nothing. I can tell you right now, I did have nothing. We didn't have nothing. We didn't have nothing. I arrived in Vancouver with the shipyard train. And when I landed, in Vancouver, of course, I only had five dollars, a few changes in my pocket. Didn't speak one word of English. And then I said to myself, where do I go from here? So the first thing that I did, I went to the phone book, pick up the phone book and try to find or make myself in contact with an Italian family. I said, my name is Rodolfo Bonora, I just arrived in here. I need a place to stay tonight and I have to find the jobs tomorrow. As I arrived on Sunday, Monday I started working. I arrived in, uh, at the CNR. I was looking for my boyfriend. He wasn't there. So um, I asked around. Come here now? Yeah. started uh, 15 years ago and uh, at the beginning it was uh, like a uh, little bit you call it discrimination <laughs> because the man doesn't want the woman. The woman is belong to the kitchen. And uh, somebody told me that, you know, the, to go home and wash my dishes. And I said, I never call you to wash it. Did you, <laughs> did you uh, wash it for me? And uh, we were upset for a couple of years, but now we are good friends, very good friends, yeah. I can name names of women uh, that I've seen play that are truly outstanding and do beat the men. You know, I mean, they're really, really skilled. And uh, uh, sometimes it's embarrassing for the men because it's a macho thing in the Italian community. But now Rudy, who's uh, 70 years of age, uh, is a very good player, but his wife is uh, a star. Come on, baby. Come is on. it too short? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Oh. It's coming, it's coming. Oh. Come on, oh. look at that. Oh. Oh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that I did try my best to, to encourage them that the woman should be a participant in this game. But they were not used to that here in Vancouver. Oh, that's a, that's, that, that's a bad one for us. That's a good one for you. Lucky. The only place you play professionally here in Vancouver is the Italian Cultural Center, where recreationally 
In every park that you go in the summertime, you see people playing bocce. If you go, if you go on Victoria Drive, they play bocce 12 months of the year. <laughs> Summer or winter, or rain or shine. Five bucks a game, you know, no bad. <laughs> we won't play any less than that, you know, for a dollar, like, or for 250 or something like that. And so people, before they play for five dollars, you have to have certain ability to, <laughs> to play, to be with the, with the rest of the guys, or else they, they won't want you to play with them. I play, 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 I win, 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 and then that's why I got all of this money. This is called a Mussolino money, Mussolino. See the big one here, this is a dollar, American dollar. When I think about the 10 years, he used American money to Italy, because when in the war, Italy and America, you have fight, and the Italy lose. That's why the people, you know, they come to America and Canada, you know, because to Italy, a little bit poor, poor, poor people, you know, you know what I mean? Work, work, work hard, work a lot, but no money. We come here to have our life. Those days, it was not, not much work over there. I moved here in, uh, in April 13, 1956, I'm in Vancouver. The first day that I arrived in Canada, which that was April 13, 19. 56. I come here in 1953. I come here in 1964. I was 27 years old. I, I just want to make a future. I want to try something else. Everybody was going to Canada, big country, free. You could start your own business and all. I heard all these things, right? And that's the reason. Do it, do it. I can't walk distances anymore with my heart failure. But I tell you, I would never change any other sport. To just come out and, and say a few bullshit to one another, and <laughs> that's that's the life, you know. The popularity of the uh, uh, of the game, the bocce game, was in a in a in a sentence a, a way to socialize. All the old folks in the old days, they all, like on Pryor, Atlantic, Union, and Georgia, were all the bocce alleys. And, you know, a lot of wine was consumed in them days. And we even heard that a big glass of wine even cost as much as 25 cents. In the 50s and the 60s, I would say between Campbell Avenue, Hastings, and Pryor in Maine, that's square, six block square, wherever they are, I think was maybe 10 bocce court in the, in the backyard. Under one of the bocce alleys on Union Street was a room in, only accessible from the sawdust bin area of the basement. And in, in that room was the booth. According to the stories of the old people would tell me, it was a joke. The police would come looking for the, the liquor. Never found any. It's under the bocce alley. Isn't that amazing? You didn't pay to play. You pay for the booze that you're consuming. Okay? I'll say you play the game, so why you have to pay my drink? Because you lost, you pay the drinks. That's what we were playing for. You know, you went in an Italian bootlegging place. It wasn't run like a, a beer parlor, you know. You, you got a glass of wine, you got a sandwich, and, uh, you know, they, uh, a lot of these people were down and out, and the Italian family, they actually cared for them. That's where we used to uh, play, uh, the bootleggers. Yeah, we used to play for big money, too. I remember I played, uh, like this, 68. I played $50 a game that time. Yeah. Like a lot of new immigrants, they came in the 50s. And uh, that is basically where they all seem to congregate, and that's where they were. The old timers were all down in Pryor, and the new ones that, that came too, they came down to Pryor Union, and then they branched out to, to a commercial drive.
remember when I when I first came here in Vancouver, Commission Dai was the Little Italy. They used to call it Little Italy. We had um, Italian restaurant on Commercial Drive. We had the uh, Italian day. I was singing on the street. But now it's all changed. Now Commercial Drive has got a lot of, it's becoming international. It's not just Little Italy anymore. There's people from all over the place and it makes for a really nice mix of people. It used to be all Italian, most of it, 80%. Now it's the other way around. Uh, but still, commercial drive is all commercial drive. Everybody knows the drive, you know? You go to commercial drive, you find the pizza, cappuccino, espresso, everybody happy, everybody singing. Uh, everybody seems to be having a great time. So enjoying life. Off commercial drive at Victoria Park, I see them playing a porcha, and if you don't see them playing, you can hear them yelling. <laughs> The Victoria Drive Park is unique because at that time when I came from Italy, it was the only place that you could meet some Italians and play bocce and this and that. But I met a lot of people that play bocce. My dad played bocce just as much as me. <laughs> he always loved it because always his friends were there and they talk about Italy, talk about the country talk about lifestyle that we live in in, in this country. The majority of the old friends from South Italy. Uh, somehow or some, somewhere they knew each other from, from one town to another town. And the skill, if you think about, and I have most of my life, how these men really accomplished what they did with so little. So uh, if they were just uh, doing a menial job of sorts, when they excelled, it was outside of that realm and in the community. So if they were a good uh, a bocce player, they became recognized as such, right? <laughs> We used to play here, bocce, with him too, until 10 o'clock at night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the light, you see the light. That's right. You yeah. know, you can just see little one. You put, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the, the, what do you call it? Lighter. I sent, I sent the cigarette. Lighter. Light, lighter. You know, the, the, put the cigarette out. <laughs> yeah, you put it like this. What is the little one? But, Buccini, call it Buccini. Here! So he... <laughs> he can't <just> see. <laughs> Too dark. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm back. Good. So you've seen the signs up about uh, the construction starting soon? When? Uh, for the park. Yeah, the what park you do? You know the new bocce courts? And uh, new playground, and you know, new sod everywhere. Where is the washroom? The washroom's going to be there. It's just going to be improved. And where is the bocce? The bocce courts are over here in the new plant. Because everybody from here, they got to go to the washroom. They need one toilet, just the men toilet, no woman. Over there. You know, it's a really, it's a blast away, really. It's not for you guys, a cat. For winter time, mostly. If you can put a little cover. Yeah. I, everyone talks about the cover. They, yeah, that's what they dream. Well, the dream, yeah. It should be, you know, because summertime and rain. It rains you know. all the time here, you know. <laughs> you gotta cover them up to make a roof. For. For the raining, you know, put the roof on, you know, cover them up. The park board had been working with a group of residents for a number of years before I, I got to uh, join the project. And this group um, began by advocating for improvements to the park. The park is older and uh, some of the facilities have been run down. The Bocce community here has also wanted upgrades to their facilities for quite some time as well. Both groups are looking for improvements here. 
I know the dogs are a problem, yeah, I, I hear that from everybody. James and I started a group about four years ago, five years ago, called Victoria Park Neighborhood Group. And the reason why we started it is because we wanted to see our park essentially be taken back for the people who live in the area. Well, we all got together and had our first sort of, I guess, bitch session, for lack of a better way of putting it. We all sort of <laughs> threw our concerns and comments on a piece of paper. And, you know, what it ultimately led to was a desire amongst area residents and a recognition on the part of park staff and, and uh, the Parks Board uh, that this was a park that whose time had come. This park already has a very special uh, feature about it, this uh, group of um, Italians that have been uh, playing here for many years. And um, it's a real, you know, it's a, it's a real feature of the park and that, that will continue. It's a well-loved park, it's a well-used park, and with upgraded facilities, I think it'll, um, you know, continue to be, and even more so in the future. Why you take a small job like that? They take it two months, really? <laughs> well, there's also the children's playground. Everything's getting replaced. The all the grass. Yes, so yeah. it's it's a big job. You know, and there's lots of work. More trees on and all that. A few more trees, yeah. some planting, oh, yeah, yeah. and lots of drainage. You know, it takes a while. Yeah. They yeah. got to do it because they got the machine going low. They can have people at the same time. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, they better hurry up and finish it quick because people are getting old, as you said, like the guy, 80s, and, and uh, you know, we're all once more in order hospital, and then goodbye, Jack. Goodbye, Italy and Canada. See you later. This club probably was started, I don't know the exact time, maybe 30 years ago, 25 years ago. Well, we have about 16 teams to participate in this tournament. Some people more serious than others, and some people can care less. Who's this guy? The main purpose of winning today is that uh, everybody likes to go to Ottawa for this major tournament, which is the Ten provinces and the territory participating in this tournament to Ottawa, which was organized by the ambassador of Ottawa. So we we'll decided to uh, promote this uh, tournament for the Boches because it's one of the traditional sports we do, uh, we did in Italy. Uh, we have to wish everybody good luck, but I'm the one who wants to go to Ottawa. If I don't, I go just the same. Don't really matter. <laughs> Because I like the sport and I like the company. And play well, you play well. If you don't, you don't. And unfortunately, I had a bad day and I had to lose. <laughs> but I had fun. <laughs>
Just a, just a minute. My name is uh, Luigi Parrotta. I have been in this community for many, many years in Vancouver East, especially Victoria Park. Victoria Park has been a mess, you know, with uh, too many people around the night uh, and uh, dogs jumping up and down the park. But now I'm glad that they fix it and make something decent. And now we're missing uh, the park for the summer. And we've been going to Trotle for playing cards. They have a few bench there. But there is a little bit too far. They switch here at uh, Garden Park. You know, no much this summer at all. But uh, we wait for the park to the area. I hope it will be soon finished uh, and go back there. they're making over here they should be covered up because it's going to be a lot of mess even if it's not rain before those few leaves are going to fall down and clean up every time we play every, every day uh, some guys come along and they uh, tell me about the, the gaps in the holes they're like no 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 it shouldn't be like that Here he comes, the Buccino. Yes. Here he comes. Here in Vancouver, uh, 
It used to be a quite a sport. It used to be quite a sport. Uh, for example, when I was president and uh, Elsa was helping me with that, uh, we had as many as 164 members. Yeah. Which, you know, for, for Boche, it was quite, quite a little group. Now, and, how many members are they? Uh, probably a couple dozen. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, they declined. No. Uh, it's an aging group, and as the older people drop off, there's, there's no renewal. I predict that they'll close the Bocce uh, courts at the Italian Cultural Center within um, 15 years. Maybe when I die, they play no Bocce anymore, and if anybody because I, I am old and somebody else is old too. You know, maybe another four or five years and then the botch, you know, for, for us the finish. I think the challenge is to attract the young people, young Italian-Canadian kid to play. It's not an easy task. It'll be very hard to do it, but I think with a lot of willpower and a lot of effort, I think we should be able to get some young people in it. That's a good ball. Get mine, get mine! Whoa! How you preserve anything in life is not by indoctrination, uh, necessarily, but by example. So, because I have the bocce court, my grandchildren come here to play bocce. And it's probably one of the few activities that they get involved in that relates to this culture. Julia, good one. What do you think of that one? What do you think of that one? Oh, go, no, no, go! <laughs> now there it is. <laughs> They did a good job, yes. Very good job. But only one thing, though, know, they gotta make sure they cut the grass like steady, like once a week. That way the grass comes nice and full, you know? And this ashtray he put over here. But nobody can get up here, he smoke. He put the cigarette on. That's worse. I am happy, you are everybody happy. Never mind the ashtray, the ashtray is That's why I want to go back. Okay. I come here in the park because this is the, you know, a good place for us, you know, to pass a little time, you know, have a good time to play cards. But the bocce, the special me, no good anymore. Because the guys don't make a good job. The bocce play no good. Too much sand. And the people can hold. You know, a lot of people hurt the leg, hurt in the back, you know, that kind of play. You know, and, there's, and nobody play any more like it before. Before we play five dollars a game. Now we play one dollar, maybe two dollars. I no play for that. I no go up and down. So somebody need to walk to move. In. I know I know need that. Just I come here, no play budge. Now a nice day, the summer come up. 
get a chance to play for. Oh yeah, I come. Maybe tomorrow will be a nice day, I come too. A little bit late, but I come.